In this video, I am going to show you how you can use DFS or depth first search to solve the flat field problem. So in my previous video, I have discussed how you can solve flat field using BFS or breadth first search where I discuss the problem in detail. So if you haven't watched that video, please watch that video first. You can also find the link in the description box below and then come back to this video. So as I said that I am going to use DFS or depth first search for this problem, but you don't need to remember depth first search uh, from the beginning. Rather, I am going to explain to you how you can use DFS or what should be our approach. So let's see for the example that previously what we did that these all the cells were one, right? And you will be given a starting position, which is this two, three here and then a new color. So from starting from this position, all the connected cells which has the same color that is one in this problem, we need to color those cells using four and the cells which are one but not connected to the starting position that should be remain and that should remain unchanged. So here we didn't change the color of this particular one or this one. So what we are going to do is we shall st start from this and then we shall go to all the eligible neighbors and uh, color those with the new color. But we are going to do it in a recursive fashion. For example, we know how to do it like say I have a function. So this find neighbors is also copied from the end of the previous uh, lecture or the BFS video. Say color cell. So for this grid, we are going to color the cell XY with the new color and we are also going to pass N and M which is the dimension of this. So what we shall do here is like find all the neighbors of XY. Of course this is not Python code, I am just writing pseudocode and then for each neighbor with same color as grid xy color cell grid so instead of xy now we shall have the new x new y which is the neighbor the coordinate of the neighbor the new color and m and once we color all the cells which are the neighbors of xy then we can change the color of grid xy is the new color so what i am doing here is what i am saying that okay so this is my cell and it has say three neighbors then i shall say okay i know how to color as a cell do this for this neighbor first then do this for this neighbor then the third neighbor and then change my color so why I am changing my color last because if I change my color at the beginning then when I am comparing my color with the color of XY with its neighbors then of course it won't match. So once I am done with all the neighbors only then I am going to change my color. So that's what I did that I found all the neighbors which the find neighbor function and then for each neighbor with the same color as grid we shall color the cell the new cell which is nx ny with the same new color and once it's done then i shall do it so note that we are calling the same function right the color cell in a recursive fashion and this is my original uh, function which is flat fill and we need to maintain a visited uh, array like a two-dimensional grid which should have the same dimension as the grid and say you know fill visited with false so i'm not going to show the code here it's just a using a for loop you can do it and then say xy is your position then you will call color cell with grid xy new color and nm which is a dimension and of course you know how to calculate the dimensions right n should be len of grid and m should be len of grid 0. So note that during the interview you also need to check check if grid 
is empty if yes then return from here and then if it's not empty because why we, are, we need to put this check otherwise we shall get a runtime error here and then we are calling okay then color the cell xy and now recursively we are also going to color its neighbors then its neighbors neighbor then its neighbors neighbors neighbor which is all good and we need to so we need to be careful about one particular thing which is for example this is a cell we start from here and we go to its neighbor and if we don't mark it mark this one as visited true then when i call recursively with this new neighbor then it will also it will also find this neighbor and again start from here so it will go into an infinite recursive call that's why what we need to do here is once we reach here like visited xy should be true and let's write that proper python code here for x dx no sorry nx ny which is a neighbor in find neighbors grid x y and m so what we need to check if grid and x and y the new cell has the same color as the previous one which is x y and visited nx ny is false that we haven't visited this cell before because if we have visited this cell there is no reason that we visit it again otherwise our program will never terminate or just crash giving a runtime error and only then i shall color the cell and when i am going to color the new cell nx ny so it will be passed here the xy and i shall mark it as visited true and then for this new cell i am going to find its neighbors and when i am done with its neighbors then only then i change the color of the grid right so this is the dfs way or depth first search way of solving this problem and please note that you don't need to memorize or remember depth first search though ideally you should but you just uh, understand the concept that how we solve this problem in in the previous one which was the bfs we kind of stored all the neighbors in a queue and from the queue we took the first one and then explored all its neighbors which haven't ex explored yet then we append at the end of the queue and so and so on so this is how we went and in this particular one we start from one cell and go to its one neighbor and one, once we found, find an eligible neighbor which is the same color and not visited yet then i again recursively call from this neighbor and say we go to another neighbor then we call recursively call from this neighbor so this is the whole recursion thing may might sound complicated but as you see the code is relatively very simple though i personally prefer to solve it in bfs way it would be great if in if you can give the option to the interviewer that you can tell the interviewer the dfs way of solving the problem and the bfs way of solving the problem and then you can just ask the interviewer whether he or she has any particular preference how you should code if not you can choose any way you want so i hope you enjoyed the two videos of flat fill fill problem and i hope to bring you many more such videos till then goodbye